Hello friends and welcome back to the kitchen. We are in the midst of season two of Paula's Kitchen. This is episode three and today I have a twofer for you, something I'm calling party favorites. The holiday season is coming up and get togethers with family and you might have to bring a dish. So we're going to present two of them today and hopefully you'll give them a try. The first one is called pizza salad. It was sent over to us by Debbie Carroll over in California and she and her husband Bob tell us that every time they bring this dish to a gathering it disappears like that. Can't wait to try it. And the second was another by request. You guys that are viewing our channel asked for a really good spinach dip recipe and I found one. So we're making that one as well. First up, let's talk pizza salad and the ingredients. The basis for the salad is elbow macaroni. I'm already a fan. We've got pepperoni and cheddar cheese going into the salad as well as our typical pizza vegetables, tomato, pepper, onion, and black olives. Then we're gonna make a delicious dressing out of oil and vinegar, Parmesan cheese, salt and pepper, Italian seasoning, oregano, and garlic. And the cool thing about this salad is you make it a day ahead, put it in the fridge for the flavors to blend, and you serve it the next day. So perfect for a get together. Let's get going with our pizza salad and then we're gonna come back and start on the spinach dip. All right guys, step one, I have some boiling water going and I need to put eight ounces of my elbows in to cook. So that's my first step. That is half of a pound box. A little bit more. All righty, that's it. So we will cook those al dente, which is about seven or eight minutes. And meanwhile, I'm gonna step over and start my chopping and cutting for all the salad ingredients. All right, you guys, I'm back at my chopping area that you're all familiar with, and I'm gonna get my veggies prepared. So I need, it calls for one small onion, and I had a big sweet onion, so basically I just decided to use half of it. And Debbie told me when she sent me the recipe to go ahead and use these kind of in a big dice. They work out better in terms of blending all the flavors. So I'm gonna do a big dice on my sweet onion. And that was quick. Then, oh, that smells wonderful already. Then it also calls for half of a green pepper. So we're kind of building the flavors of a salad or a pizza, I should say. We're building the flavors of a pizza. So this is a fresh, fresh. I just went out this morning and picked up all these ingredients so everything is super fresh. We have fun doing Paula's Kitchen. Never doubt it, you guys. It's a lot of fun. I get lots of comments from you guys. There are certain of you that write that you cringe at the way I cut up vegetables because I oftentimes point the knife at myself. So I'm trying to Calm everybody's fears by actually doing it on the cutting board. So far, I'm liking it. Now, I have to tell you, my husband, the guy behind the camera, was trying to sneak into the pepperoni earlier. I would not permit that. All right, the last of the veggies that we're going to do is the tomato. And again, Deb recommended that we kind of take the seeds out of the tomato and just kind of use the flesh. Do that, and we will cut these up and drop them in the bowl. And then I'm going to, my next step, I'm gonna do the pepperoni and the cheese. So be right back with you. All right, I checked my pasta. It is done, it's been seven or eight minutes. So heading over to the sink to drain it and the instructions say this needs to cool off before we actually assemble the salad. So I'm going to put it in my colander, let it drain, and I'm going to let it sit right here in the sink while I continue working. Pasta is drained and cooling off. My veggies are cut up. So now let's work on the piece de resistance, which is the pepperoni and the cheese. The recipe calls for three ounces of pepperoni, and this is actually a six ounce package. So I'm going to use roughly half of it, or thereabouts. And Wait a minute, can I have one? <laughs> Just one. 
Oh, I'll give you there. You can have two since I dropped that guy. Okay, back. <laughs> back to action. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the man is incorrigible. All right, guys. That's maybe roughly half. All right, the instructions tell us to cut these in quarters. So, pretty simple there. And I'm going to drop them in a clean bowl. Oh my gosh, this is tempting. Who doesn't love pepperoni? All right, let me finish up these peps and then I will come right back and we're going to cube that eight ounces of cheddar. I chose mild cheddar for this, although I'm sure you could use any kind, but I'm going to cube that next. So, all right, next up, I'm going to do my cheddar and the instructions are to cut that in cubes. So just get going on that. I am such a nut for cheese. <laughs> Actually, everything about this recipe just jazzes me. So I think those are bite-sized cubes. What do you think, Dale? Look good. Yeah, they do. They look tasty. And then the last ingredient is, actually there were a couple of optional ingredients in Debbie's recipe. One was black olives, which I love on a pizza, so I did that. The other was mushrooms, if you like mushrooms. So I bought a little jar of black olives, and we'll toss those in as well. All right, you guys, so I just finished my cutting up my eight ounce block of cheddar and I did resist tasting it, but anyway, all right. So in this bowl, I've got my cheddar and pepperoni ready to go. In this bowl, I've got all my vegetables, got my black olives, my pasta is cooling off. So next step, we are going to assemble our dressing. So be right back with you. Okay, you guys, I have pre-measured all of the ingredients for this wonderful dressing, and I'm telling you everything about it, I'm just loving. So let's put it together. I'm going to use a big bowl because I want to make sure I swish it to death. <laughs> Step one, I need one third cup of Parmesan cheese, fresh batch I just bought this morning. Then I also need two teaspoons of salt. I did not salt the macaroni water, by the way, don't, because then you'll end up with too much salt. Um, I need one quarter teaspoon of black pepper and one quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. Those are going in. And then I need a teaspoon each of oregano and Italian seasoning. So I've got those both in here. And those are my dries. So let me just swish them together a little bit to mix those flavors. And then the wets are very simply one half cup of vinegar and one half cup of oil. So I have a fresh red wine vinegar I just bought. I'm gonna do a half a cup of that first. I grew up using red wine vinegar. I know a lot of people use white vinegar or cider vinegar. Uh, it's just a preference. Uh, I grew up in an Italian household. We always had the red wine. And then some nice light olive oil, another half a cup for that. So we've got a cup of dressing in total. Bring my dries back over here and pour this together. Now, if I had a big enough shaker, or if you have a shaker, you could certainly shaker this dressing, but I'm just gonna whisk it. Now listen, you guys, while I'm doing this, let me just mention Debbie's husband, Bob Carroll. Uh, we want to tell you a little bit about Bob because he's a fascinating, lifelong entertainer, a magician, ventriloquist, mentalist, and he has an amazing career. He has been doing something so wonderful during lockdown, and uh, we're going to tell you a little bit about it. We discovered Bob during lockdown this spring, and we instantly became fans. Bob Carroll is a native of New York State who got bitten by the magic bug at age seven and never looked back. He built a career doing magic and ventriloquism in New England and even took his act to Las Vegas. In fact, I am sure we actually crossed paths at some point in our past. In March of this year, when we all got stuck at home, Bob started a variety and trivia show on Facebook Live and has continued that show every single day at 2 p.m. Pacific time for more than six months. 
This is the heart of a true entertainer, always wanting to make people happy. We will put a link to his live trivia show in the description box below. And trust me, you don't want to miss the Bob Carroll Show, especially if you're a big fan of classic family-style entertainment. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, this is the last step. By the way, don't you just love Bob? We do. Hope to meet him someday in person. <laughs> All right, uh, I have taken my pasta out of the colander and I've put it in my big bowl so that I can have lots of room to work. And now it is a matter of assembling the pizza salad. Can't miss any of those pepperonis. Assemble my veggies as well. And my black olives. And let me just stir the dry, stir this all together. Just a quick toss. Oh my gosh, how beautiful this is. You set this out on a buffet. Oops. <laughs> you know, cameraman, I can't ever do this without, you know, dumping something. Um, you set this out on a buffet and tell me everybody isn't going to go nuts to grab this first. All righty. My dressing is going on top. And the recipe does say that if you, after you chill this for 24 hours and you go to serve it, if it seems like it needs a tad bit more dressing, go ahead and do just even amounts of the oil and vinegar, a couple tablespoons or whatever you might need. So I've never made this before. I'm not sure if I'm going to need to do that, but let me just stir this wonderfulness together and I'm going to put it in the refrigerator to chill. Hey, you guys see everything, even the mishaps. Incoming. <laughs> yeah, there you go, incoming. You don't even know what's on the floor. <laughs> All right, this is a beautiful thing. I seriously love the looks of this salad. Thank you so much, Debbie. Can't wait to try it. We're going to chill it, and then we're going to get started on the spinach dip. Okay, here we are back in our starting spot because we're going to start our spinach dip. This is also something that you can make ahead the night before, assemble the dip, and then just bake it the next day. So let's talk ingredients on the spinach dip. Of course, I've got some wonderful fresh spinach I just picked up at the grocery store. And we are going to make the dip luscious with a combination of cream cheese, sour cream, mozzarella cheese, parmesan cheese, garlic, salt and pepper, and then we are going to garnish that with some fresh parsley. I'll tell you what, I am a huge fan of spinach dip. I can't wait to try this. It has five stars on the web, so let's make this together. Alrighty, we've got all our ingredients assembled for the spinach dip. Let me just give a shout out to where I got this. When I was asked to do spinach dip, went on the web and I looked for the best five-star spinach dip. It's from a website called dinneratthezoo.com. The author is Sarah Welch. Sarah, this looks wonderful. Can't wait to try it. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna need to bake it. So I'm gonna turn my oven on to 375 to get preheating. Then I have some fresh spinach. I need 10 ounces for the recipe. So it needs to steam. And I looked up the quickest way to steam spinach and basically, if you toss it in a frying pan with a couple tablespoons of water and put the lid on for about five minutes, we will end up with steamed spinach. Look how beautiful, Dale. Do you not just love fresh spinach? I do. And the cool thing is, when you buy it at the grocery store ready to serve and pre-washed, you don't have to do anything except drop it in the pan. Looking forward to this. All right, I made it fit, and only a couple of them fell on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> All right, put the lid on this guy. It's already sizzling, and we are going to keep an eye on this and get that spinach wilted. Be right back. It is wilted. Now, it's very important, it says in the instructions, that we make sure we get the water out of this baby, so... Let me put it on some paper towels. We're going to roll it up and squeeze the water out of our spinach. 
Wow. <laughs> it makes me want to put some olive oil and garlic on it and just eat it. <laughs> Smells great. How much do we just love spinach? <laughs> All right. So here we go. Just going to roll this baby up for a few minutes. And then we are going to chop it. So let me just set that aside for a minute. Let me assemble our ingredients for the actual dip. And we're going to start putting that together. This is really a quick and easy one, you guys. First off, I'm going to take some cooking spray and I'm going to spray my casserole dish that I'm going to be baking it in. It's just a Pyrex dish. I'm going to set that aside. And let's get going. It's all kinds of good stuff in here, you guys. We've got an eight ounce package of good old Philadelphia cream cheese, one of my all time favorites. And we have one cup of sour cream going in. Typical dip ingredients for sure. But the spinach, of course, elevates it to a different level, no doubt. All right, that's it for my sour cream. Then I also need a teaspoon of minced garlic, which turned out to be about two cloves of garlic. Refer to my recipe here, a half a teaspoon of salt. And one quarter teaspoon of fresh ground pepper. And one half cup grated Parmesan which we had just used in our pizza salad, so luckily we had that handy, and then three quarter cup of shredded mozzarella. So that is what is going to be the basis for our dip, and then we are going to, of course, cut up our spinach and fold that in. So let me just get this thing stirred up. The cream cheese I had gotten out earlier in the day, so it's nice and soft. And so it should be pretty easy to stir all this together. As I said, when I was looking for the recipes, the reviews just raved about this particular spinach dip. So that's why I chose it to make when we were requested to do a spinach dip on Paula's Kitchen. You all know if you watch us, you know how much we like Applebee's and on rare occasions, we allow ourselves a treat and order their spinach dip appetizer, which is, of course, wonderful. <laughs> Alrighty, you guys, that is stirred and ready. I am going to set that aside for just a moment. I'm going to get my cutting board and we're going to cut up that spinach. Be right with you. I took my spinach out of the paper towel rolls and boy, that worked really well. So I am just going to run a knife through it, chop it up coarsely. It cooled off enough that I can handle it and touch it. Bring my bowl back over here and let's drop this spinach in. Stir it in. And then it goes into the baking dish that we sprayed and it gets topped with another three quarter cup of the mozzarella. And when it's done baking, we're going to Put it under the broiler and brown that topping just the littlest bit right before serving. Time to put it in the bowl. Try to do it for the camera, although that's always difficult. <laughs> Being a right-handed person and the camera's off on my left, hopefully my cameraman can get the shot. All right. That looks pretty already. Let's make sure we get all this goodness. Beautiful. And then this three quarter cup of mozzarella gets sprinkled over top. Make that wonderful crust. And we are going to put that in the 375 degree oven for 20 minutes. And then I'm going to turn on the broiler after that. So popping in the oven now. All right. It's about 2.30. So we'll be back at 2.50. 2.50. 20 minutes. I'm going to pull this out for a moment. 
Oh, look at that bubbling goodness. Hey, our SD card is full. We had to take a moment to clean that up. All right, I'm going to put this on broil for just a couple minutes. I'm going to put it on high. I just moved my rack, so I'm going to put this in the broiler for a couple of minutes to brown up that top. And then we are going to serve it. I already cut up some veggies. These two beautiful dishes, I have to say, never having made either one of them, I could not be more thrilled with the outcomes. Haven't tasted either one, but oh my gosh, they look incredible. And no, I didn't wait the 24 hours on the pizza salad, but I'm having some anyway. <laughs> As I said, pizza salad I'm grabbing from the bottom so I get some of the really good oh I don't have any pepperoni what's wrong with this picture now I'm gonna sample this myself because my husband is not a dressing guy anyone who knows him he's never eaten salad dressing his whole entire life he also doesn't put buns on his hamburgers just odd but what can <laughs> I say <laughs> however he's definitely going to be trying the dip so let me try this I got myself a fork Oh my gosh, I can't tell you how thrilled I am to be taking a bite. I need pepperoni in my bite. I need cheese. That is unbelievable. And it's only been in the fridge maybe an hour. Oh my gosh, that is so good. It's gonna be my lunch all week long. It's great. All right, I'm gonna give this uh this uh, spinach dip a try. Hey, did you see my hat? Oh my gosh. This was handed down to me from one of my uh, famous relatives, Cecil B. McKenzie. He was a, a famous movie director a long time ago and they found this in an attic in a barn someplace and sent it to me. That's a big lie, but. <laughs> Honest to goodness, I was gonna say, you're worse than Durango. Yeah, no, I'm not. Oh, oh my gosh, Look that is that. smoking. Oh. My goodness, look at that mozzarella. Holy mackerel. All right, I'm just gonna leave this in here. And just let me get a cracker. And I'm gonna get a little taste. And we'll see how good I do. I have to put it down, sorry guys. And I'm also gonna have to get this to get it on the cracker. Spread it on there. Look at that. I think I'm gonna burn my mouth as soon as I, as soon as I <laughs> take a bite of it. Wow, is that beautiful or what? Actually, it's a lot of work, isn't it? It, it? it is a lot of work. Oh. Oh. That's, that's fabulous. I was hoping you'd say that's that. That's fabulous. It's Let's put the stars. camera up over here so we can both try it. Okay. I'll put both these recipes in the description box. They are both thumbs up fabulous. They were easy to make. They came out beautiful to look at. Right. Both of them, yeah, just beautiful to look at. So, highly recommend both of we, these. We have enough pasta salad for 30 people if you'd like to come over and <laughs> have a bite. <laughs> I'm taking it for lunch every day this week. <laughs> hey, this is a, a precursor of what's gonna happen in October. It, it is. I don't, want, I don't want to say too much about it, but. Just a little tease. Yeah, just a little tease. Uh, this right here. Road trip. Road trip. Yeah. <laughs> All right, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification button. Follow us in our social media. We are all over the place now, aren't we? How the heck could you not subscribe and get notified? You just never know where we're gonna turn up. <laughs> you have no idea. We may be coming to your house next. You just don't know. All right, guys. We'll bring pizza salad with us. Uh, yeah, we're definitely gonna have to. All right, hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye, everybody.